think it's time that I finally set up the front gears in this truck. While I'm in there, replace some seals and figure out the alignment. This truck should be good to go. The reason that this truck went down was I noticed the wheel bearing was ticking, so I went to go drive it home and just limp it home, and uh, it wasn't just a tick. Wheel bearing completely destroyed, actually melted the axle shaft. Look at that, that's insane. Broke it off in the drive gear. Just broke that right off. Um, so the spindle's trash, the axle's trash, the hub looks saveable. So the whole front end will be completely rebuilt. I'm already going through that side of the axle and I was gonna go ahead and freshen up this side so I might as well do the gears that I've had sitting in the living room for, I don't know, about a year. I'm gonna re-gear it. It's gonna get 456s in the front, just like the back. Okay, so I already disassembled the entire axle because I, where the horses running off to. Anyways, so I've already went through the disassembly process uh, because I figured you guys probably don't wanna watch it twice. So I'm just gonna be putting it together now. So if you wanna take it apart, just do it in the reverse order that I'm doing it in. <laughs> So here's the old inner axle seal right there. It wasn't actually in too bad a shape, still pliable. Um, but I'm in it this far. So here's the new one. Let's see if the tool I bought is gonna work for me. Whoop, I'm gonna throw that in the dirt. Axle seals in, we're gonna be focusing our attention on the pinion and carrier. Get the spiders off. So it's gonna be our new pinion. This is our old one, and it still has the inner pinion uh, bearing still on there. So we have to get that off. And I'm trying to do this to where I can reuse the old bearings, and hopefully it'll set up a little bit easier, because I'm trying to skimp on a couple steps. So I went ahead and ordered one of these clamshell style uh, bearing pullers. Supposedly really good at pulling bearings without destroying them. So we will find out. That works right there. So this is how this tool works. Put the clamshell there. You're gonna put this stuff together. Just like that. Tighten it down on the Bearing race, make sure it's snug on the clamshell right here. Make sure it's snug on the bearing race right there. Make sure the clamshell is underneath the bearing itself. And then we'll put these together like so. This is actually my first time using this tool. I figured I was gonna need it if I do more axles. All right, supposedly, it just comes right off. So you just put an impact on there, tighten it up. Supposedly, it's not supposed to destroy the bear. Now we can actually put this on the new pinion and um, set this all up with the old bearings. So these gears didn't come with like a setup uh, instructions for it. Uh, the only thing written on the pinion is 073. Now 073 could be um, like millimeters, uh, 73 millimeters from center line, or I'm thinking here's the original shims for the pinion, come off the yoke, since it's 
that have crushed the eagle. Yeah, that's 70 thou. The original shims are pretty close in thickness to what the Motive Gear has written on it. And I'm gonna guess, this is my only thing to go on here, is that this number is for the amount of shims that need to go in here. So the originals are 70. I'm gonna put 73 in here. See how it goes. Perfect. Put a little gear dope on there. Oops, that was bad. But, you know, the more the merrier, as they say. Oil in there. These are the shims that went behind the inner race inside the axle housing. Besides those, this oil slinger slash shim was in there as well and obviously I beat the living crap out of it to get it out and I can't find this online. And it doesn't really seem like other front axles have this. So I think it's gonna be safe to run without it. That's my judgment, do with that what you will. But these two I'm gonna keep and then I just need to find one that's as thick as this right here. So 20 thou. All right, so that's gonna be our winner. That's gonna replace this slinger slash shim. So the way this came out was these little shims were all the way in the back. And the slinger went in front of those. A bearing race. Call that in there. Now we'll come back over to my little cart. We're done with these shims. Now these shims are gonna be for the preload on the bearings. The original ones, this one's all ate up, galled up. Actually, that's 73. That must be right. I'm gonna go ahead and say 073 is gonna be our number to go with. I'm going here. Just grab a stack. I'm not gonna reuse those old ones. Okay, 73.5, that's what I'm gonna run with for now. We got all our shims installed, inner bearings installed. Just let that ride right there. And install our bearing. I'm not putting the seal in right now. I'm just test fitting. There we go. Put our washer on. Here's my fancy little holder tool. Cut this tool out of just flat stock, drilled some holes in it. Hopefully it's going to work. There we go. Next day. So I threw the pinion in there, tighten on the yoke about uh, 220 foot-pounds, zero preload on this. There was just no resistance in the rotation of this. My first stack was 73 thou, and I took 10 thou out, so 63. I'm gonna try that. Hopefully that gets the preload where, where I need it to be. Yoke nut is torqued to 200 foot-pounds. This rotation feels actually Pretty good, maybe just a slight bit tight. But we're gonna see, this is 63 thousandths shim on uh, preload. You torque the nut in foot pounds, 200 foot pounds, roughly, 180 to 220. And then you check rotational torque 
with inch pounds. So this, this is gonna be hard to show you guys just with my setup here, but there's two different torques here. There's, there's the breakaway torque and then there's rotating torque. Looks about 22 brake and about 13 rotating. So that's actually exactly where it needs to be as far as rotation. Probably should have put a little oil on the bearing, but it'll get it later. I'm fine with that. So all I gotta do now is pull the nut off and put the seal in there, put it back together. That'll be fine. Let's go ahead and check the ring and carrier. It is very important that these caps go on the same direction and the same side they came off of. Along with the bearings, the bearing races if you're using those. 60 foot pounds. Feels about right. Let's check. This is going to be one of the special tools you're going to need. A dial gauge. Looks like five thousandths backlash. I don't know if that's too tight or not. Let's check it. Okay, this is kind of hard to see and it's kind of hard to do. Working on the ground underneath the truck. Obviously, the space is limited right here. A decent pattern I tried to hold it on the drive and coast gear uh, or drive and coast side I just I just couldn't really do it that great so I kind of put minimal effort into it but these patterns the ones that are there top side they're not terrible I'm gonna run it if it was someone else's vehicle I'd probably pull some backlash out of this and get it closer to um, um, probably like seven. It's got five in it right now. I'd like a little more, but I'm not going to pull everything apart just to do that because let's be honest, this is the front axle and this is going to drive maybe 10% of the time. Um, now that this is kind of my daily, uh, I don't really put in a four wheel drive too much. So this front gear is fine. When I did the rear gear, I was a little bit more meticulous on the backlash and pinion depth and all that. Um, but the way this all looks right here, running this pattern the best I could, I'm all right with that. So we're going to run it. Time to get on the rest of this axle. Now the pinion's set, the carrier's in. We're going to need to go ahead and put the pinion seal in. Put a little black RTV on there. Now the difference between a pinion with a crushed sleeve and a pinion with shims already set in it is that you can take the yoke on and off and the preload's already set. There's no change in it. So since I already set the preload with the uh, 63 thousandths of shims and the rotation was nice, I can go ahead and torque this yoke nut down. 200. Give it one more shot. Double check. There you go. Done. Pinion, yoke, seal, shims, bearings, all that stuff set. Carriers in it. That's set. 
Now we can start putting axle shafts in this thing. Not necessary, but I don't want this thing to move. All right, so that's gonna do it for this video. That was a complete axle re-gear and reseal on a uh, first-gen Dodge Dana 44. Cad axle or center axle disconnect, which I don't see too many videos of, so I figured I'd put one out for you guys. Um, I didn't do the driver's side hub yet because there's some pretty interesting stuff I need to do to it. I pretty much destroyed the whole driver's side hub assembly, knuckle, uh, spindle, everything. Anyways, that's gonna be my next video on this truck is gonna be getting this driver's side all fixed up. And then after that, hopefully this truck is gonna be back on the road. So thanks again for liking, subscribing, commenting. This one's been fun. I didn't really wanna re-gear, but I needed to, so. Anyways, thanks for watching.